Hello, everyone. My name is Triton Perrin, and I'm here today bringing you another book review, this time on uh, another one of my favorites, which is Get Strong at Attacking by Richard Bozulich or Bozulich or something. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Now, a lot of people tend to recommend the book Attack and Defense uh, by Ishida, I believe. And uh, I did end up buying that book, and I do actually believe that it is a good book. However, I ended up preferring this book, Get Strong at Attacking, over it because I prefer a more practical rather than theoretical approach in books. And this book is mainly a problem book that just sort of explains the concepts as they are presented in each problem. The book itself contains what, like a summary section at the beginning on, on the basics of attacking, which actually covers everything for the most part that is in the attack and defense book but just on a much smaller scale and then it reinforces the ideas later on uh, so some of the principles that it discusses in the very beginning of the book are like you need to attack from a position of strength and that the moves that you're supposed to use to attack are the knight's move and the capping move now of course that doesn't mean that those are the only moves available it means that those are the first two moves that you should be trying to read out and, and figure out to see if they work for the purpose of attacking the stones. And of course, it also talks about how the attack is not to kill, it is only to make a profit. So if you're not sure where your profit's coming from in an attack, then you're probably looking at the wrong move. Now, the book contains 136 problems, I believe. My only problem with the book was that there weren't enough problems. I wanted there to be more and because they were good problems, but I felt like maybe 200 of them would have been a little bit better or 300, but that's sort of not a problem with the book. That's a, that was just like personal preference. I felt like there should be more to it, like more, um, uh, more problems in general. Now, I think this book is probably appropriate for uh, single digit Q and Don level players even when I started reading this book, which was not that long ago, really, like within the last year, I still got some of the problems wrong. Now, uh, they say that there's multiple ways to attack something, but I didn't find the what I call the book way, which is what's, dis what's discussed in this book. These are the most clear ways of attacking these formations and the principles behind them. So I feel like anybody who feels like they want to get better at attacking, which is what the book suggests, get strong at attacking, uh, is going to get a lot of good information from this book. Now I've uh, selected two problems. This is the first problem in the book and the third problem in the book, demonstrating the types of problems they're going to be. Of course, there's some that are more complicated later on that involve uh, leaning attacks and such, but these two I felt demonstrate some, some good ideas. So this first one uh, I have here, which is like an opening problem. Now, a lot of the time, people don't believe that you're necessarily attacking in the opening. But the problem comes here with this R11 move, which is really close. Uh, yeah, this R11 move, the marked triangle move here, it's really close to Lex strong formation on the top. So you're supposed to try to find out the best way to attack and pressure these stones. So you can take a second to think about it if you want to. I'm going to move on now. This is uh, probably the first move that should occur to most people, but it's the second move that I feel was the most interesting here. So you should push the white stone towards your stronger side, which is this enclosure. This enclosure is very strong. White has to make a two-space extension here. And then you should pressure uh, from this side on the top here. This is giving you a little bit of potential along the top side of the board as well as when white jumps out here, allowing you to naturally uh, help enclose this bottom side. And white actually still owes a move. Um, white needs to jump out one more time. And this actually, uh, if we go back to here, there's actually another problem in the, in the book within the first 10 problems, I believe, which is something that I really liked about the book. They didn't just leave this position and say, uh, yeah, this is just good for black. They also said how to punish white if white doesn't play this move right now, which um, it's, it's my going to go show it real quick just because I thought it was fun. It's to do this. White comes out. You, you just let white 
uh, you just let white come out and you get the bottom half of the board, which is kind of cool. So the thing that you're supposed to learn from this is to uh, apply pressure when you're allowed, when you're uh, given the chance to in the opening. But the main point, as I said, is uh, like a, uh, pushing your opponent towards your strength. So now we can go look at the other problem real quick. And it's uh, here. So see, the other one was an opening problem. And this one is like uh, how to attack a group in the middle of the board. So I can give you a second here to uh, to look at this and how you want to play. Now, the Mark Stones are the ones you should be attacking, but you should also think about other moves that you'd want to play as well. I'm going to just move on, of course. But So if you want to try to figure something out on your own, you should pause the video. And I remember one of the principles that you learn about in the first few chapters or the first chapter or whatever of this book is to attack with the Knight's move. This is actually the right move here, which is this uh, peeping move, which is also a knight's move. White can't let you cut through that. And then you extend here, which uh, gets rid of some of the eye shape. Then when white jumps, you can uh, push it towards the middle of the board while helping secure your territory on both sides. Now, this is where I had a little bit of a hard time with it originally. It's not hard to find this move here, but... I actually like, I feel like playing a different way a lot of the times in my games. And it's actually discussed in the book. Like if you don't attack and you just play something like this, then when white include, like when white fixes the weakness here, uh, threatening to push down on this stone. And now there's an invasion on the bottom. So this jump here did not really accomplish anything, but that's the type of move that I know I would want to play in a game. So it's good to see like a, a stronger way of accomplishing the same goal that this uh, F5 move is trying to accomplish. So that's the review real quick. I do think this book is appropriate for uh, single digit Q players and down level players. If you just want to focus on trying to f um, make your fundamentals while attacking stronger. And I do recommend this book over uh, attack and defense. Now, I do also believe you should read Attack and Defense eventually, but for the actual practical application of fighting and understanding how it works, this book is superior, but the Attack and Defense book does go into a bit more of the, the ideas that you should have when attacking, so that can also be very useful. And I might end up reviewing Attack and Defense in the future, uh, we'll see what happens. But right now I'm focusing on just my favorites. Then we'll get into the ones that I didn't like as much or that I thought were just okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, of course you can leave it down uh, below the video. And uh, if you have any other books that you might want me to review, uh, just let me know. And if I have it, I'll review it. If I don't have it and it sounds interesting, I might buy it. Who knows? So anyway, I think that's about it. So uh, I'll see you guys next time.